Hi, uh, my name is Natasha Bailey. I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis a few years back, so here is my story with that. Um, my son, Grayson, was just a couple weeks away from turning one year, becoming a one-year-old. And he was in his bedroom and I heard him cry, so I got up, and this was on a Friday, so Spencer, my husband, wasn't working. We were all just home. So went up and picked up my son and set him down on the changing table and I started to talk to him and my speech was slurred and I stopped and I thought that sounded really weird. And so I kept on talking to him and I was trying to speak slowly and focus on every word that I was saying and everything came out slurred. It was the weirdest feeling. And so the first thought that came to my mind was someone spiked my root beer float last night because we had root beer floats with our neighbors. <laughs> and so I got Grace and changed and I brought him into our bedroom and started talking to my husband and I'm like, do I sound like I'm talking weird to you? And he said, yeah. And so I was like, I have no idea what's going on. I, I can't, I can't talk right. Everything I say is slurred. And so that was the only symptom. So we kind of went through our morning and did all of our errands and did everything we needed to. And we had already planned to take our kids to the zoo. We lived in Utah at the time, so we were taking them to the, the Hogle Zoo in Salt Lake. And as it got closer and closer and we were driving to Salt Lake, my husband was just like, this does not feel right. And so he called his dad to meet us at the LDS hospital and so that he could pick up our kids and take them and he was just going to take me in. So we went to the hospital. I got up to the check-in counter and I told the woman that my speech was slurred and there was a room full of people in the waiting room and they took me straight back. Like not even waiting, not say just a minute, they just took me straight back which is a little alarming to me, <laughs> like, okay. So they hurry and ordered a, an x-ray and did the x-ray, got back into the room. The doctor came in the room, turned the lights off before saying anything, and then walked up to me with a little flashlight and then got called away and had to go out of the room. So then he came back in and checked my eyes and he, said, we think you have multiple sclerosis. So the first thought that came to my mind was scoliosis. And I'm thinking, how is a curve in my spine making my speech slurred? But then it hit me, multiple sclerosis. And a friend that we had um, a few years back, her mom has multiple sclerosis. She has, there's four levels of MS and she's got the worst level. Like she is bedridden. She's got black pockets in her brain. Like the worst case scenario is what she is dealing with. And then it like hit me like a ton of bricks. Oh, and so all the thoughts came rushing into my head. I'm going to end up in a wheelchair. I'm not going to be able to take care of my kids. My son, who is just about to turn one, my daughter, who was right around three. And so I have these little kids. And so it was like a ton of bricks. But that was the only symptom I had. So they sent me home and said, gave me some names of some um, MS neurologists and said, call someone on Monday because it was, you know, Friday and everyone doesn't work on Saturday or Sunday or whatever. And so went home and did the worst thing in the world. I went online and searched multiple sclerosis. <laughs> and you never do that when someone tells you you have something because it always gives you the worst case scenarios. So Fast forward to the next morning and I got up and was doing my daily little morning routine and went into the bathroom, lost, well, lost my balance, hit my head on the toilet <laughs> and kind of fell down a little bit. So went into Spencer, he got someone to get the kids, he ran me back to the hospital. And from that point on the entire left half of my body became weaker and weaker and weaker. So got checked into the hospital, was there for a couple of days, um, 
had a fun experience with getting a spinal tap. <laughs> I don't recommend those if you're conscious. Um, but was released from the hospital and went home with a cane because the left side of my body just really wasn't working. And I had, um, so I've had two defining moments with my whole MS experience, well, my whole life experience. Um, a friend from church came to visit me right after I got home from the hospital and sweet, sweet lady. And she said to me, you must be one of the strong ones. And I just said I wasn't going to cry, but I'm not going to. <clears throat> she said, you must be a strong one because the Lord knew you could handle this. And as soon as she said that, that gave me courage thinking I could end up in a wheelchair. I could end up bedridden, all of these different things. But the Lord knows that I can handle this. And so it made it a little easier on me. So another two part to the defining moment. My, um, my whole life growing up, my grandmother, my grandma Chipman on my dad's side, I had a lot of issues <laughs> when I was growing up. I fell out of a window, the second story. I fell through a floor. My dad was building a house. I fell through the floor into the basement. Like we had a loft. I fell from the loft through the railings and landed on my back on our front entryway. Like I've fallen so many <laughs> different times, <laughs> but nothing really has happened. Like hairline fracture when I fell out of the window, nothing happened with the falling through the floor and from the loft or anything like that. I know I'm crazy, but nothing, nothing really happened. And so my grandma Chipman, like every time something happened, my grandma Chipman would always say, you are being saved for a special purpose. And so <clears throat> after I was, had a little more strength and I was able to go back to church and to function again, sorry. <laughs> um, I, w I had a, I received a calling to be on the activities committee and we went to a meeting and we were sitting there in the meeting and the whole time I'm sitting here thinking, do you really know me? Oh my gosh. <laughs> do you really know me? Cause I was thinking of here I am using a cane. I had to have someone come and help me for a couple of months because I had no strength on my left side. So I couldn't change a diaper, which was kind of a bonus of getting MS. But um, I just couldn't take care of my kids. I would lay on the couch all day and I'd have someone, a babysitter for me and a babysitter for my kids come and help me out. Uh, whether it was family or friends, they all just kind of made a little list and took turns coming in and helping me. And so I'm sitting here thinking like, I, I can't really do a whole lot right now. What, what is going on? Do you really know me? As soon as the meeting was over and I had never personally met our state president, I knew who he was. I had seen him at state conferences and at the church and different things, but I had never directly met him face to face. And after the meeting was done, he came up to me and he said, I don't know why I feel like I have to say this to you, but you are being saved for a special purpose. He used the exact same words that my grandma Chipman used to say to me every time something happened. And my grandma Chipman passed away while I was in the hospital dealing with the MS. And so that was huge. That was a huge defining moment for me too, because that told me right there, Heavenly Father knows me individually. He knows everything that I had been going through. My grandma was right there with him. And maybe she was that special spirit that was whispering into that state president's ear. This is what she needs to hear. Because if you say this to her, she won't doubt. 
So there's no way I will ever, ever doubt the existence of a Heavenly Father and the Holy Ghost because I know that He has spoken not only to me, but to other people who have spoken to me to let me know that He is there. Sorry. <laughs> so, <clears throat> fast forward to a few years ago, I was having some sciatic issues. Um, they just thought it was sciatica. I went to, a car, not a chiropractor, a physical therapist. He gave me some stretches to do and different things and um, went to a couple of doctors. And finally, the last doctor said, I think you need to call your, your MS um, doctor just to make sure this has nothing to do with MS. And so I called them and she said, well, the lower lumbar has nothing to do with MS and that's where your sciatic issues are, but you're due for an MRI. So we'll just go ahead and order a full brain, spine and lower lumbar scan. So they did everything and called me either that night or the very next day and said, we think that we have found something in your spine, so we need you to call this doctor. So they referred me to a brain and spine specialist. And so they hurry and got me in and did the MRI or did a, an X-ray and a CT scan of all different angles and everything and brought me in and I have a, had a tumor in my spine, <laughs> so um, it had been growing for about, they say it had probably been growing for about 20 years. It was pretty big. It had worn away the spine. It had cracked two areas um, in one of the vertebrae because it was so big. And a little funny side note, when I, I sent a message out to my family, my family, Spencer's family, our families, and and my brother-in-law replied back, just letting him know it's probably been going for about growing for about 20 years or whatever. And my brother-in-law replied back, "Haven't you been married to Spencer for about 20 years?" <laughs> so that helped me to name the tumor because I wanted to name it. And so I named it Spencer Jr. and just called him Jr. <laughs> I always, I always have, um, I've always had a good attitude about things. I've always stayed pretty positive about things and I think it is because of those defining moments where I know the Heavenly Father is there, I know I'm in His hands, I know that He knows everything I'm going through and He's here for me and He knows that I can handle these things. He knows I could handle MS. He knows that I could handle, oh, and they found a hole in my heart too <laughs> after they diagnosed me with MS. They found a hole in my heart. So. He knew that I could just handle all of these things that are being thrown at me. Um, and knowing that my grandma was always there, you know, saying you're being saved for a special purpose. I don't know if I fulfilled that purpose yet. Um, I don't know if I'll ever know what that purpose was, but I believe those words. I believe, um, <clears throat> I believe we all are here for a special purpose and we can all make a difference in someone else's life. And I, I love it when, when people call me or they text me and say, I have this friend that they were just diagnosed with MS. Would you mind them calling you or contacting you? Absolutely. I love, I love discussing any kind of issue that I have because I'm an open book and I love to help other people um, just to kind of give them hope because I share my experience with them. I share the different things um, that I've been able to draw off of. And I always, always share with them the stories about my defining moments and letting them know, Heavenly Father is aware of you. He knows you can handle this. No matter what it is, whatever He gives you, you can handle it. So I know that I had this year of not doing a whole lot. I was very, very restricted. And so what do you do except for sit on the couch and watch television? And as my husband would say, eat bonbons all day, but <laughs> I don't do that. <laughs> and so 
it was such a comfort to have the scriptures and to have like different different websites and different blogs that people put out like Book of Mormon Central following their study plan and having them there to help me di dive deeper into the scriptures and really make sense to what I was reading just immersing myself in the gospel I'm not the type of person like I literally do not turn the television on all day long it's not until my husband comes home from work and that we're we're sitting down and at the very end of the day that the television goes on I do not watch TV and so for me that wasn't an option to just lay around and do nothing and just think poor me I have I had this I have this disease now I have this tumor I had a hole in my heart like all these different things that are being thrown at me I wasn't about to just lay there and and be depressed and and just kind of give up because I back coming back to the MS my my mom worked with a lady and her mom was diagnosed with MS and my mom told me the story she said as soon as my mom was diagnosed with MS she took it as a death sentence and she just would lay on the couch and wouldn't do anything even though her doctor told her you need to get up you need to be moving you need to do things she she took it as a death sentence and she gave up on life and would not do anything which would absolutely make your situation worse I wasn't about to do that I knew that I had to keep on pushing I still had kids that were at home and trying to help them and and be there for them and for my husband but I needed to be there for me and make sure that that my mind was staying active and that I was focused on what what is the most important thing for me to do right now because I can't do anything else and that was stay as close to Heavenly Father as I possibly can and so that's absolutely the scriptures and um, and studying and and diving deep into and finding finding different blogs and different YouTube channels and different things that help you to really understand them and and not only did my knowledge of the scriptures grow so much through teaching seminary but it also grew a ton that year that I had to take a step back from living a life and was, you know, very restricted in what I could do. And so absolutely the the scriptures were a huge comfort to me in in my recovery and not and not just sitting back and and thinking, well, this is my lot in life and I'm just gonna sit here and be and mope and be sad about it. No, I, I knew that I had to just keep on pushing and moving forward. I think that the things that, that help me to get through every struggle that I have is the defining moments that I've had. The knowledge of Heavenly Father knows me. He's not going to give me more than I can handle. And, and that I'm a strong person. And He knows that I'm strong enough to handle all of it. Mm -hmm.